Chuck Nolan, a dedicated systems engineer at Federal Express, finds himself in Moscow, showcasing the intricacies of FedEx's business operations to the local staff. Emphasizing the utmost importance of time, Chuck highlights the significance of precise package sorting, a cornerstone of FedEx's overnight delivery strategy. To drive home his point, he unveils a package he had sent to himself, containing a small timer that marks a disappointing delivery time of 87 hours. Frustration boils over as Chuck confronts the staff, but his credibility is challenged when the translator recounts a tale of him supposedly appropriating a child's bicycle when his delivery vehicle faltered. Chuck swiftly clarifies the exaggerated account, explaining that he merely borrowed the bike to ensure prompt deliveries. With a sense of urgency, he initiates a time-restricted package sorting task, their efficiency jeopardized by a truck booting incident in Red Square. Determined to succeed, they adapt, taking to the streets to complete the task just as the clock ticks down. Amidst the commotion, Chuck manages to leave a message for his girlfriend, Kelly, promising to return within 24 hours and expressing his need to see a dentist regarding a bothersome tooth. Back at the airport after the successful sorting, Chuck shares a heartfelt conversation with his co-worker and friend, Stan, whose wife is battling cancer. The weight of the news lingers. Soon, Chuck finds himself back in Memphis, where the headquarters of FedEx resides. Eager to spend Christmas Eve with Kelly, he joins her family for a festive dinner. Amidst the holiday cheer, an unexpected call summons Chuck to Malaysia. Accompanied by Kelly, they make their way to the airport, exchanging heartfelt Christmas gifts along the way. Chuck presents Kelly with a collection of kitchen essentials, while she bestows upon him a cherished antique watch passed down from her grandfather. Nestled inside the watch's lid is a picture of her, capturing Chuck's heart. Touched by the gift, he vows to keep the watch set to Memphis time, a reminder of his unwavering commitment to return home. Just before boarding his plane, Chuck surprises Kelly with a small ring box, an unspoken declaration of their engagement. In hushed words, he assures her, I'll be right back, as the sole passenger on a FedEx cargo MD-11 aircraft, Chuck awakens abruptly as the plane jolts amidst turbulent winds. An intense storm engulfs them, causing the pilots to struggle in their attempt to navigate around it. Unfortunately, communication with Fiji is severed. Seeking solace in the bathroom, Chuck is suddenly thrust into a perilous situation as the door violently swings open, threatening to suction him out due to the rapid depressurization. Miraculously, he regains his seat and receives a life raft from a crew member just as the plane hurtles downward, crashing into the unforgiving depths of the ocean. The fuselage swiftly fills with water, but Chuck manages to emerge, climbing into the raft as he witnesses one of the engines erupt in flames. Exhausted, he succumbs to unconsciousness, awakening on the shore of a minuscule tropical island. The harsh realization dawns upon him. He is utterly alone. The rustling sound of falling coconuts momentarily deceives him into believing he is being shadowed, intensifying his desperate hunt for sustenance and fresh water. Armed with determination, Chuck grapples with the arduous task of opening a coconut, resorting to various methods before finally triumphing with a sharp rock. Although he manages to spear small crabs, the absence of fire renders them an unsatisfactory source of sustenance. As he explores the island, he discovers a small cave nestled within the rocky terrain, concealing 11 FedEx packages that had washed ashore from the wreckage. Mourning the loss of one of the pilots, Chuck buries his fallen comrade. During a moonlit night on the beach, he glimpses the distant glow of a passing ship. Utilizing a flashlight he procured from the pilot's possessions, he endeavors to signal the vessel yet his efforts prove fruitless. The following morning, Chuck makes a daring attempt to escape the island, utilizing the rubber raft salvaged from the jet. However, treacherous breakers atop the coral reef cause the raft to capsize, hurling him onto the sharp edges and inflicting a deep gash on his thigh. Despite the setback, he resolutely forges ahead, constructing a rudimentary camp and cautiously unveiling the contents of the FedEx packages. Among the items lies a collection of unexpected aids, including ice skates, a delicate lace dress, videotapes, and a divorce decree. Curiously, one particular package adorned with a pair of wings remains unopened, its mystery lingering. Chuck endeavors to ignite a fire through the age-old method of friction, but his efforts leave his hand lacerated. Overwhelmed by frustration, he hurls the volleyball found among the wreckage, inadvertently leaving a bloodstained mark. Seizing upon this accidental imprint, he transforms the ball into his sole companion, affectionately christening it Wilson, after its brand name. Days turn into weeks, and Chuck engages in conversations with Wilson, describing the flight's trajectory and 
estimating the staggering expanse of the search area, spanning over 500,000 square miles, equivalent to twice the size of Texas. The realization gradually dawns on him that the prospect of rescue grows increasingly remote. Determined to conquer the untamed elements of the island, he invests an extensive amount of time and effort into the arduous task of kindling fire by rubbing two sticks together. Frustration becomes his companion, yet he persists, honing his technique until triumph is finally within reach. Flames dance before him, casting a warm glow upon his secluded abode. Nonetheless, his dental agony, which plagued him since departing Memphis, has escalated into an excruciating abscess, leaving his face swollen and throbbing. Driven to the brink, he musters the courage to employ the sharp edge of an ice skate blade as an improvised dental instrument, employing a rock as an unyielding hammer to extract the tormenting tooth. The relentless passage of time paints the backdrop, as four years slip through Chuck's weathered fingers. His once robust frame, now a shadow of its former self, having shed over 50 pounds, while his unkempt beard and disheveled hair bear witness to the trials endured in solitude. A primitive existence becomes his reality, day after day. It is during a violent storm that fate presents an unexpected gift, a pair of broken fiberglass walls torn from a portable toilet and flung upon the shore by the capricious winds. In that moment, a spark ignites within Chuck, an epiphany that sets his spirit ablaze. He envisions constructing a raft, utilizing the fiberglass walls as an improvised sail, capable of navigating the treacherous swells that encircle the island. Determined, he wields his crude tools, felling trees and laying out the foundation of his salvation. Binding the poles together poses a challenge, prompting Chuck to weave a sturdy rope from the barks of local trees and remnants of the videotape he possesses. Counting the days required to catch the prevailing northeast trade winds, he clings to the glimmer of hope that they will carry him towards bustling shipping lanes and, ultimately, rescue. Uncertain of his destination, he resolves that he would rather gamble his life on the open sea than wither away in eternal solitude. At a fleeting moment, he envisions Wilson, his ever-faithful companion, expressing doubt over the viability of his plan, leading Chuck to impulsively cast the volleyball out of his cave in a fit of frustration. Instantly remorseful, he dashes outside, frantically searching for Wilson, begging forgiveness for his impulsive actions. Securing his loyal companion Wilson and the parcel adorned with angelic wings to the raft, Chuck readies himself for his daring escape. Equipped with a newfound sail and fashioned oars, he sets forth, braving the tumultuous surf of the reef, bidding farewell to the island and its tranquil lagoon. Navigating the vast expanse of the open ocean, he encounters numerous storms along the way, finding solace and shelter beneath the protective canopy of his sail. However, one fateful day, jolted awake by a cascade of water upon his face, a gift from a playful whale's spout, he witnesses Wilson drifting away, slipping from his grasp. Desperate attempts to retrieve his loyal friend prove futile, for the fear of losing the raft restrains Chuck's outstretched hands. Consumed by sorrow at the loss of Wilson, he resigns himself to a bleak existence. Just as hope teeters on the precipice of oblivion, a miraculous encounter rejuvenates his spirit. A majestic whale's spout emerges, heralding the presence of a passing container ship. Signals of recognition illuminate the vessel's towering hull, confirming Chuck's long-awaited salvation. A month elapses, and Chuck is finally whisked back to his beloved city of Memphis. An extravagant reception, orchestrated by the company, celebrates his miraculous return. During the flight home, he engages in a heartfelt conversation with Stan, who divulges the mournful news of a funeral held in Chuck's honor. The weight of Stan's sorrow weighs heavily upon Chuck's heart, compounded by the loss of Stan's wife during his extended absence. The grand reception, graced by the presence of Fred Smith, FedEx's esteemed president, unfolds, accompanied by a sumptuous buffet. Chuck's gaze lingers contemplatively upon the luscious crab legs, evoking memories of his resourcefulness on the island, where survival hinged upon capturing these elusive crustaceans. Kelly, Chuck's cherished companion, intended to join the celebration, yet her emotions swirl in a tumultuous storm of confusion. Her husband, an orthodontist who tended to Chuck's dental needs, conveys his apologies for Kelly's absence, disclosing her struggles in grappling with Chuck's sudden reappearance. He implores Chuck to grant her more time. Peering through the window, Chuck's eyes lock with the sight of Kelly, tears cascading down her cheeks, solace sought in the embrace of her husband before departing in a vehicle. Under the cloak of darkness, Chuck embarks on a taxi ride, his destination intertwined with his yearning heart. Kelly's home, an air of anticipation envelops their encounter as she welcomes him inside. Engaging in intimate conversation, they delicately navigate trivial matters, unveiling the profound transformations that have shaped Kelly's life and aspirations, all while she coped with the presumed demise of her beloved. Moved by the depth of their shared experiences, Chuck returns to Kelly, the watch she had bestowed upon him, recognizing its significance as a cherished family heirloom. Chuck's isolated refuge had 
remained more than 600 miles adrift from the Cook Islands. He had traversed 500 treacherous miles upon his makeshift raft before being discovered. Resolute in preserving the connection they once shared, Chuck chooses to retain her photograph, a token of their intertwined destinies. Entrusting him with the keys to his beloved Jeep, which she had dutifully safeguarded, they exchange heartfelt apologies, seeking solace in their mutual forgiveness. As he drives away, the rain pouring from the heavens mirrors his bittersweet departure, a journey marked by redemption and profound self-discovery. In an unexpected twist, Kelly's voice reverberates through the rain-soaked air as she chases after Chuck, calling his name with a desperate urgency. Sensing her presence, he retreats, their embrace intensified by the pouring rain. Amidst the downpour, she confesses her unwavering belief in his survival, while others urged her to move forward. Tearfully, she professes that he is the love of her life, reciprocated by his heartfelt admission of love. Engulfed in a few precious minutes of conversation within the confines of his car, Chuck, in an act of profound respect, encourages Kelly to return home, acknowledging her journey towards embracing a future unbound by their shared past. Embarking on a transformative journey, Chuck sets his sights on Texas, accompanied by the FedEx package adorned with celestial wings in his faithful Jeep. Arriving at a ranch guarded by an intricate wrought iron gate bearing the name Bettina, he discovers an empty residence, leaving the package with a poignant note, acknowledging its pivotal role in saving his life. Continuing his drive southward, he finds himself at a crossroads, his car halting near a four-way intersection. Puzzled, he steps out to consult a map, only to be met by a friendly and enchanting woman in a weathered pickup truck. Intrigued by his apparent confusion, she offers assistance, prompting a smile to grace Chuck's lips as he confesses his indecision about his destination. Generously, she imparts wisdom about the various paths, revealing the desolate expanse that stretches northward to Canada. As she drives away, the ethereal wings adorning her truck catch Chuck's eye, evoking a stirring recognition. Standing at the epicenter of the intersection, he deliberates, his gaze lingering in the direction the woman traveled before resolutely turning northward, embracing the unknown that awaits him.